Next, we're going to look at a couple different examples of uh, how to figure out real world power supply issues by looking at three different uh, actual power supplies. So, we're going to look at these three. We're going to do the calculations over here on the whoops, wattage worksheet. So, we'll do these three examples here straight off of the Newegg website. So, <clears throat> we're going to say this desktop, the Sacer desktop, Aspire TC875, UR, Intel, i3, 10th gen, blah, blah, blah. What do we actually figure out it should have as a minimum, as a calculated, as a minimum, and as a recommended power supply uh, for this one? So we have to go through the specifications on it. So the first thing we look at when we go over here, we know this, right? We know, and I'm just going to keep track as we go. I'll pick another color. It has a motherboard, right? So we're going to say 100. And we're just totaling these things up to find the total wattage that is required for the power supplies we have. So we know it's got a motherboard. Next thing, we're going to take a look on that sheet for the amount of RAM and the kind of processor that it has at the same time. So let's take a look down there at those two things. So uh, what kind of processor? It's got a i3 10th gen 36 blah, blah, blah. Let's see anything about that one down here. So it is a processor features right here, 64-bit quad-core processor. So we're going to look at the quad-core processor on that, on that list. And then memory, it says 8 gig DDR4 2666 megahertz. Does it say anything else about memory? Let's go down here further. It's got one stick. It's got two slots, one available, one stick. So let's go over here to our sheet. You know what? I'm going to get rid of this page so that I don't have to worry about which one's popping up. And let's go over here. So eight cores, one to eight cores is 100. And that's to include all, everything we possibly could. Only one stick of RAM. Five, right there. So right now, 205 watts. Graphics card, we'll look and see if it's got a, what kind of graphics card it has, and then we'll look at the drive. So let's just do it one at a time. We'll look at the graphics card. It has integrated video. It does not have a graphics card. We can verify that, by the way, as we look at systems. By looking at the pictures, I frequently tell people they've got to look at the pictures to see what's on there and this is terrible it says okay look at these pictures they're different pictures uh this one has a picture of a graphics card this one does not well that one does this one does not and this one does not so why that didn't help us much did it my point is you can look at the back and usually they're the same but considering this and this those are two different look at that different power supplies on those pictures. Uh, that one's even a different power supply with no graphics card. This is a, the same power supply with a graphics card, but it's saying integrated graphics, so they're right there is that HDMI connector. We're gonna go with what it says in the explanation. We're not gonna go with uh, what we see in this case. So we've got no graphics, so that's a zero. Nothing there, so that's a zero. And then what kind of drives do we have in this computer? So we have to go back here and look at what kind of drives do we have. So we're going down, down here. It says it's got a DVD writer right there, and it's got a one terabyte 7200 RPM. If it has an RPM, it's not a solid state. Solid states don't have any revolutions per minute. They don't turn. So let's see, anything else? Da, da, da. Graphics, we already said integrated. We've looked at the memory. It's got one hard drive, one optical drive. Uh, integrated. Anything else? Keyboard, mouse. Okay, the only other thing. Let's go ahead and put that down there. So we've got a, a DVD drive, so that's 30. Really weird, 30. And we've got a conventional hard drive, that's 10. Okay. We don't have high speed, we don't have a floppy. The only other thing on here that I might look for is does it have any extra cooling fans because those aren't traditionally listed. So let's, we're gonna fall back on the pictures on this uh, and see, we can't see any on the front. 
Let's just kind of do a trip around this PC and see if we see anything on the back. I think I see one on the back. We can't tell. That could just be a hole. Unless I see fins or screws, I see no screws there. Let's see if we zoom in, if we can see anything. That is just a hole. No screws to hold a fan in, no fan to be seen. We're gonna keep looking though. Still see no screws, no fan, no screws, nothing. So there's not even a fan. There's a spot to put one in, but there's no fan there. So let's go back here and finish our calculation. So we've got 205 and another 40, so 245 is our calculated. That makes our minimum 250, right? We add, round up the next 50 and are recommended we add 50, so 300. Now, on the test, test, there's options of things I might ask you. I might ask you, what's the calculated? I might ask you, what's the minimum? I might ask you what the recommended is, or I might ask you to apply and say, does the power supply of this computer meet what you would recommend? In other words, is it 300 or more? Let's go back and look. That would make you have to go back and say, what is the power supply in this thing? And I already saw it when we were down here someplace I saw it. Where was it? I already saw it. Our power supply is 300 watts, okay? So when they made this PC, they made it meet recommended power. Okay, now, what can we add? What can we not add to this PC? If we had this PC as stated, right? It's a i3 3.6 gig with quad core processor, and I wanna change this to a gamer PC, cause it's cheap, right? I got it for $389, and I wanna turn it into a gamer PC. I could do that by adding one stick of 8 gig RAM and adding a video card. But if I did that, if I did that, look what we would do. We're right here. If we added another stick, that would take it to 250. And we added even a mid-range card, adds 150, right? Then our power supply is 100 watts below recommended. We would be the opposite, right? So that's one of the things you can get a low-end machine turn it into a gamer machine by just adding a video card, a little more RAM, I'd also make it a solid state, but that's me. But I'd also have to add a power supply in this one. So what am I giving up by getting the low end? That's a calculation that you have to look at, right? Because maybe this 389 is a good system if I add those things, but maybe once I add those things, I could have gotten something else. Let's go to option number two. Let's take a look at the next one. So our next one on here is a ABS desktop, Intel Core i5, Intel, 8 gig RAM, blah, 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 one terabyte. Let's look at this one, okay? So we know we got a motherboard. Let's look at the memory, and we have to hit specs on this one to see the overall specs, in case you haven't done that before. So we hit specs to see them. So we've got a six core processor, and how much RAM do we have? Eight gig, let's go down and look a little more. It doesn't tell us any more than that it's got an 8 gig stick. We're going to assume if it's got 8, it's got 1. And if it's got 16, it's got 2 because 8 gig sticks are the cheapest sticks to buy right now. It's cheaper to buy an 8 gig than it is to buy two fours. So we're going to go with that since they didn't give us any more information. So we're going to go with 100 for the motherboard. And we're going to go with 5 for the sticker RAM. We're going to go with 100 for the processor. Okay. Now we gotta go into graphics and those drives. Let's take a look further back in there and see what we've got. Okay, so we're looking at this one. Let's look at graphics first. By the way, I can already see it's got a 450 watt power supply when we go to look later. Let's, we'll come back to that. Graphics, integrated video graphics. It's integrated, okay? So it's getting graphics off the CPU. It doesn't have a separate graphics card, which in the end could slow our system down even though it's a nice i5 ninth generation processor. And let's see, that's it. I think that's it for what we're gonna look at now. So we've got no graphics card. Let's look at the extra drives now and see what we've got down there on those drives. So 
on drives. We've got two drives. We've got a solid state 240 and a, and a one terabyte hard drive. That's the way I like to build systems. I, I'm happy with this drive, so, this system so far. And I've got a DVD RW as well. So we've got a DVD RW and we've got two other drives. So DVD RW, we're going to add 30 watt usage for that. Uh, realizing by the way, when we calculate these, these are if we're using them all at one time. Obviously, a DVD just sitting there, if there's no DVD in it, is pulling almost no power. But what we can't have is a power supply that when we put in our DVD or CD ROM, or we put a DVD in to watch a DVD and all of a sudden the hard drive drops offline. Can't have that. And that's what you would have happen if you had below the minimum. Whenever you put the surge in there, the other thing would not have enough power and would drop offline. So we don't want that to happen. So we've got a conventional hard drive, 10. We've got a solid state drive, 5. And let's look and see if we've got any of these other cards or anything on that one uh, and, and that we need to worry about. OK, we don't worry about USB ports. We're only talking about if we're going to use them. OK, and we said the keyboard and mouse, this isn't even PS2. I mean, it isn't even USB. It's a PS2 keyboard and mouse. Uh, maybe it just has a port. We don't know what it's going to have. A keyboard is USB keyboard, mouse USB mouse. We're not counting those. We consider already have those in the other ones. I'm looking for other stuff. I'm not seeing anything else. We're going to fall back on the pictures then when we're done to see if there's anything else we should look at on this system. See that DVD drive, we're coming around to the other side, looking on the inside. That's the CPU fan. I see one cooling fan right there. Can already see that in the case. So we know there's going to be one of those. There's our traditional hard drive. There's our solid state drive. Nice big cooling fan. If we wanted to zoom in there, we could zoom in if we wanted to see that fan right there. There's that fan that I'm talking about. Let's see if there's anything else. Uh, there's that fan again. I don't see anything else. We can see there's no expansion cards in there. If we want to zoom in there, you can see there's no cards in any of those slots, uh, which is what we're verifying from our thing. I got no fans on top. There's not even a spot for them. And the one fan in the back. So we've got one more fan on there to throw into our calculation, which is only three watts. So let's do our adding 205 plus 45, that's 250, plus 3 is 253, so calculated is 253. So minimum is, round up, next is 300, and recommended would be 350 in this case. And if I asked you the question, does the power supply included in this computer meet recommended, we already know it was a 450, right? If you didn't see where I saw that at, down here in the specification, it says power supply, 450 watt. It does meet it. Every once in a while, a student goes, oh, it says 450, and we said 350. It doesn't meet it. It means 350 or more meets that uh, power supply expectation. Because remember, we should, or should remember, that the farther it is away from this, the more efficient it runs and the cooler it runs. Uh, and technically, maybe the longer it'll last because you're putting less of a, a, a load on it. Also, possibly, the more power surges it can take from your home electrical system if you don't have a surge suppressor on there. Um, those surges, over time, break down a PC. So, there's that one. Let's do one more to show you how to use this. And then we're going to go and do the website. This one is a high end. Oh my gosh, it's $10,299. This is a perfect example when we get done with this course of, I guarantee you could buy, build this system for well, probably around $2,500. Um, if they're asking $10,299 for it, let's go and, and go through the specs on this one and see what all, all we've got down here. So specifications. It's a Ryzen Threadripper third gen. And we might as well check out the memory while we're here. Memory, oh my gosh, 256 gig. Holy moly. That is crazy. How many sticks? Man, this is a pretty good system. Let's see if we can find out on here. Uh, memory. Uh, high performance. 
performance memory. Wow, um, let's do, they're, they're gonna be 32 gig sticks uh, because that's as big as they go. So if I had 256 divided by 32, I have eight sticks of RAM in this guy. Eight sticks of RAM. This is our Batman. Okay, let's go back here. So we've got a hundred here. We've got eight, so we've got another 40 for the RAM. We've got a thread ripper right here, so there's 200. And it says eight to 16 cores or a thread ripper. 200, so that's where we're at on that. Graphics card. This is it's. First of all, if you don't know, because we haven't done graphics cards, um, assume if it says something like gaming, uh, and this was under the gaming systems that it's high end. The RTX 2060 8 gigabyte super is without question a high end graphics card. Um, and I'm surprised this isn't doesn't say gaming system on there anywhere but we're gonna say it's a high end. So there's 250 watts for our video card. This is a nice video card. Okay, let's go down and look at the drives. We had some Mondo drives on there. I already noticed that. So let's look at, I'm gonna go back to specifications. So what do we got? We've got, uh, I already said that that's a, that's a nice video card. Uh, in fact, um, just to let you know how much the, the video card itself is. Let's just look at Amazon's price. Uh, that video card is a $409 uh, video card. Still doesn't quite justify the $10,000 price tag I'm seeing, but, um, and the memory, what the heck is this being used for? Okay, we've got two drives. We've got a four terabyte solid state and a 10 terabyte spinning drive. That is insane. That is more than enough. We're going to definitely be able to install some games on this puppy. So conventional hard drive, we got a 10. We, it doesn't use any more power because it's bigger. Uh, and a 5. Uh, did we have a CD-ROM on this at all? Wow. For all that, no CD. There's nothing in there. In fact, we don't, we don't even have more than one picture. $10,000, I can't get another picture? We can see, however, that it's got a fan on the back and two in the front. It's one, wait, I wish we could see it a little better to, uh, I, I'm gonna say that it has two in the front, but you know what, it's really hard to tell. I, I can't believe this third ripper wouldn't have two, and actually this picture isn't even a picture with the power supply and the motherboard in there. This is just a picture of the case. That is, that is kind of crazy, and that's the only thing we get is that one picture of the case. Um, it's custom made too, so it, maybe it's because they don't make it until I'm way off the screen. They don't even make it until um, it's in there. So, uh, what? Are we, so no, no drive there. No you Let's see if anything else. Uh, da, motherboard, RAM. Drives, uh, video card, thousand watt power supply, blue. Oh, it says Blu-ray right there. Um, Blu-ray, twelve times LG SATA. Where the heck is that at? They didn't even have that in the picture. So we're gonna have to include that. We'll include that in our, our thing here. So we got a Blu-ray. We got another thirty. Uh, we got nothing else that I saw on there. Oh, we got the one cooling fan. So, I, I'm not going to mess up this. I'm going to do what I would recommend you guys do, which is not do it in your head. That you use the, your handy dandy calculator to make sure you don't get anything wrong. So, I'm going to say 100 plus 40 plus 200 plus 250 plus 30 plus 10 plus 5 plus 3 equals calculated to 638. 638, so minimum 650, so recommended 700 watt power supply. Recommending 700 watt, and that's because this is a this is a pretty good high end system here. Still think you could do it for under 2,000. 
uh, or at least under 2500 and the power supply on it we already said I saw it someplace with that it was a thousand watt there we go a thousand watt power supply integrated in there this has integrated uh, Wi-Fi as well uh, this is a you would you would be happy with this machine I would be happy with this machine um, but that's how we figure that out okay so that's how we do calculated minimum recommended and does it the question is does it meet recommended is as long as it's that or bigger the answer is yes because the farther it is away the more efficient it runs and the cooler it runs. So that's how to calculate using the wattage worksheet. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is how to calculate using online power supply calculators. These are not a rough house estimate like mine is. Mine is a bunch of numbers put together. In fact, I saved that so we can take a look at it and see how close it is to the online calculators. In the chapter three book on our online calculators, we've got two. We've got a basic simple one, new egg, and we've got a, I'm gonna call it an intermediate calculator. Uh, that we can look at both those and I'll tell you which one I want you to use. We're going to start with the Newegg uh, calculator right here. So the idea is you tell it exactly what's in it and then it tells you what you need uh, as far as the power supply. So we're going to look at the same uh, PCs that we looked at before. In fact, I'm going to throw this back over here, uh, down here maybe. Um, so we can use this power supply calculator. So CPU, what is the brand? Oh, I'm, here, what is the brand on the CPU? This is an Intel i3 10th Gen 101. So we're going to go down there. We're going to pick it's an Intel. And then it says what Intel? And then we're going to say Core i3. We got to find it up here. Core i3. Um, let's see if it has it. It does not have that i3 on here. Excellent. So we're just going to do the top i3 since it doesn't go past 9th gen. It has i5 10th gens here, but it doesn't have i3 10th gen. I'm just going to pick the top i3. Uh, bad example, Mr. Cool. Yes, I know. Um, I throw that back here so we can just go back and forth. i3 10th gen. Hmm. That's too bad. I, I would like to be showing that. And that's the problem with the online calculator because we don't have any. Nope, it doesn't go up there. Have, that's the top, the highest gen i3. So we're going to do, I will not give you one on a test. It isn't on the buck in the thing. Okay, motherboard. Select a motherboard. It is, how do we know? We're going to say it's ATX because it's an ATX looking case. And I wouldn't give you one that wasn't ATX. This is a extended ATX, micro ATX. We can look and see if it has any of that kind of information for us. <coughs> Anything on the motherboard? No, got nothing. So we're just going to say ATX. Graphics power, uh, we're going to select nothing because there is no graphics on there. Random access mainly, we're gonna we have one eight gig stick. Solid state, we have one two forty, right? Is that what we had on this one? Let's go back. Uh, storage, no, one terabyte, sorry. So uh, none, and we've got a one terabyte. Seventy two hundred RSPM, doesn't matter what the speed is, and the optical drive, I mean it doesn't matter what the uh, sizes and this was a dvd rw so let's pick a dvd rw there and that's it for this basic calculator so 
if you rounded this up, because uh, it's calculating it, right? It says the recommended is 214. That's no such thing. So you would have to round that up to 250, which would be the minimum. And they're recommending, what, what do you have to buy? They're, they're saying what the calculated is right here. So it came out with a, basically the same thing, right? We calculated out, we rounded up. Let's uh, open that back up. We came out with 245 rounded to 250 and got 300. They came out with 214, and like I said, this is more conservative. Let's try the other calculator, though. We're going to use the other calculator for the same one now. So this one has two. It has a basic, which is what we basically just kind of looked at, and an expert. The expert one asks us everything about it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do the expert one. So CPU, so we're going to do, which is what we had, right? That I just put, typed the number in. So it came up i3-10-100, it's got one of those. Util I just leave everything where it's set, by the way, on this. Utilization, speed, memory, it's got one 8 gig DDR4 module, that's it. Video card, it's got none. It has a spot for a second video card. Storage, it's got one. Uh, and it's just going to be a SATA 7200 RPM right there. SATA 7200 RPM, that's higher, lower. We're going to 7200 is the most common. And optical drive, we have a DVD RW. No PCR ca cards, one standard keyboard and mouse. Go back over here. No other devices, it's got one fan. Uh, it's 120 millimeter fan, I know that. I don't know that it makes any difference. Doesn't have liquid cooling. And we say calculate. This one comes up with calculated. So this is calculated, just so you know, okay? So it's saying seeing 220 in it, it's doing even more recommending, uh, no, 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 it's coming up with 170 and recommending 220 because it's rounding up, it's just adding 50 uh, there. So it's saying this, it came up with far less, like I said, it's more restrictive with, with my calculation. You won't go wrong, but at the same time, you might buy more. So this is saying that you need, uh, recommend buying a 220 which you'd have to round up anyways to a 250. So it's recommended slightly less uh, than I did with mine. And that is that calculator. Let's go to the next one then. Well, we can toss this PC away. Uh, and is that the one? Yep, that's the one. Okay, so we'll go to the next, next one we looked at, which is this i5-9400. We'll do the basic one again. Let's, not that one, this one, yep. So this time it's i5-9400. Let's see if we can find that on here. Yep, there we go, 9400. ATX motherboard, uh, again, no video card, uh, or no extra video card. RAM, what did we have on RAM? I can't remember that off. Oh, we had an 8 gig stick on that. And on this one, we had a solid state, a 240 gig solid state and a spinning drive. And we had an optical drive. And that's it. So did that change it while we went? Oh, I didn't do that right. I find 9400. So close. There we go. ATX motherboard, no graphics card, 8 gig, solid state, 240 and 1 terabyte. And a DB. it's changing it as we go with it. So there we go. It's saying 198. Rounded up to 200 at 50, 250. And we came up again with more than that one. Uh, we came up with 350. Uh, is there something we missed? No. No. So again, ours is more um, conservative. Let's look at this one. Let's see what we get on here. So this time we got I5-94. You just have to start typing it in. There we go. 
Uh, same thing with RAM, video card, no RAM, video card. This time we had also a SSD. It so again. Oh, did, did we have to calculate on this? Oh, yeah, calculate. There we go. Uh, came up with just three more. Uh, again, far less than the other one did. Let's go to our final competitor here, the Adamant Super PC here, and see why. I'll be interested to see how close it is on this one. Um, so this one is a AMD processor, and it's a Threadripper. 3990X. So let's see, Threadripper 3990X, there it is. Graphics processor on this was a NVIDIA, NVIDIA, sorry, and it was the 2600, 2060 Super. Uh, random access memory, holy moly. So 32 gig times uh, it doesn't even let us go up to eight. Oh wait, see DDR3, uh, 32K DDR4, sorry. And it still won't let us go up to eight. Solid state drive, it had a one terabyte plus and a hard disk drive. Doesn't let me pick anything bigger, an optical drive. Okay, so this comes up with 698, and we came up with 638. With this, well, we came up with 700 recommended, and it basically, once you, it already has that in there, so it's kind of already doing 700. Let's see what the other one does, though. I, I'd be interested here to see what the expert one does. So we've got, no, we've got the 3990, Red River 3990X. We've got eight. 32 gig modules. It could be 464s, I suppose. I don't know if that makes much of a difference. Uh, maybe we'll go back and check that. Video brand is an, no, no, NVIDIA 2060 Super. Um, we've got uh, already a SSD and a SATA uh, PCI Express. There's no extra cards. Cooling, I'm gonna bump this up to three. Uh, oh yeah, and I think it has liquid cooling. We, that didn't isn't something that went into mine. Uh, liquid cooled workstation CPU. That nothing else has said this. So liquid cooling kit. Oh, which which liquid cooling kit? Um, does it say? Quiet edition liquid cool CPU. Doesn't let us know. I uh, wonder if there's a... Mm -hmm. Does it... Don't. This is quiet edition. It doesn't sound like a brand cool pro sleeve. Hey, you know what, I'm gonna go back here one more time and see if it says anything down here in the specs. Or, let's see, thermal tank, core tower, tough power, power supply, motherboard, quiet edition water liquid cooler. Doesn't really tell us. Uh, I don't, I'm probably going to lose something on this, but you know what? I'm just going to say, I'm just going to grab one. Uh, and I'm going to say calculate and see what it comes up with. This came up with 642, we came up with 638. That's pretty darn close. Uh, as far as my uh, roughhouse guess chart goes, uh, I'm pretty happy that all those uh, came together. So that's the difference between using the online calculator and using the paper one. You're going to get close to the same power supply either way. The only thing is, my chart is my chart. And Five years from now when you go, oh, I need to get a power supply. What power supply should I get? Darn it, where's Mr. Poole's chart that I had back in 2000 and whatever? So you need to know how to find and use these power supply calculators. There's lots of different options out there. If you just Googled online 
power supply computer calculator. Uh, you would probably get a bunch. Look, there's one. There's the one we just used. That, and there's the other one we just used. Those are the two that we just used, the top two searches. Uh, there's one from Cooler Master. There's a bunch of other ones on there, too, that are power supply manufacturers that want to make sure that you buy the right power supply for your computer. Um, I'm giving you specific ones to use because, obviously, if I do a calculation, it needs to be close to what you got, or I won't be able to, to have the question answers match. So that's why I'm giving you the calculator to use. But if you were five years from now to build a PC, any of these are going to work with the current components to figure out what you need to make sure that you're not buying something too small for your system and too big. Because when we go to buy, uh, in fact, let's go, let's go buy. We'll, we'll complete this whole. We're going to say we're building this one, and we know we need a 700 watt power supply. If we next go to Newegg power supply to find our power supply that we want to Newegg, and I'm using Newegg right now. I want to point out that uh, I don't buy that much from Newegg. Newegg has a great search engine, uh, better than Amazon by far, as far as finding computer power supplies. I go and find the realm of what I'm looking for, and then I'll use it as a launch point. To, okay, I'm gonna look on the web, I'm gonna look on Amazon in particular, uh, to see if this is a good price, or if I can get it someplace else cheaper. Um, but as far as searching tools, it's great. So I'm gonna go to power supplies up here, and I only want one sold by Newegg or, um, and I want to make sure down here, I'm going to go, it has to be new. I would never get a refurbished uh, or open box power supply. Um, I want an ATX power supply. I'm going to look at these as well. They also say ATX um, power supply. And then I can go down here and say, okay, it has to be greater than 700. So I can say, you know what, I only want to look at these ones that are above 700 watts, anything above 700 watts is fine, right? Uh, and then I'm gonna go and say lowest price of that category. So I can get a 700 watt thermal take down here at $69. I'm sure if I go to the top of the list, I can pay, well, it's not $130. So now I have to decide what I wanna buy. And, and when I'm looking at what I wanna buy, I have to look at wattage, which I'm already doing, right? Then I'm going to look at cables to make sure it supports the things that I want to connect. And then the last thing I'm going to look at, which I didn't have on the overview, is what it's rated as far as energy efficiency. Because the more, if I'm paying the electric bill, which you may or may not be, and in a few years you will be, um, if I'm paying the electric bill, the better rated power supply, if I get a gold rated versus a bronze rated, um, it means it's more energy efficient, so I'll pay less, uh, especially myself, I run my computer 24-7 at home. Um, I'm going to pay less in electricity for it in the long run. If I save five bucks here and spend another hundred in electricity running it, I didn't save anything, right? So I'm going to look at a couple of these. This is a uh, 80 plus. Let's look at, um, I'm going to go down here, let's see, energy efficient, look, we got 80 plus, 80 plus bronze, 80 plus gold, let's look at the gold certified, we've already opened a couple, so now we're at $89 for a gold certified, that's not that much more for me to go and get something that's going to have a much, uh, possibly a much better um, energy efficiency since it's 80 plus gold certified. Um, boop, boop, boop. Here's my specs. What I want to look at now is what kind of connectors do I have on this power supply to make sure it's got everything I want. So it's got my P1 24 pin power supply. It's got a PCI Express connector. Um, it's in fact got four PCI Express connectors that are all six plus two pins. I can put some, some video cards in with this sucker. I've got eight SATA power connectors in there as well. And I don't see anything else out. Other things I might want to look at while I'm looking at this to buy it. MTBF stands for mean time before failure. It should not fail until it's got over 100,000 hours in it. That's okay. Let's see, let's do some calculations. 
100,000 hours divided by 24 hours in a day divided by 365 days in a year, it should last 11.4 years. I'm good with 11.4 years. Uh, things like having an MTBF and having a good warranty makes me happy that this is probably going to be around in, for the long haul. Okay, so high energy efficiency, 90% and certified 80, 80 plus gold. So it's optimized and the farther I am away from the power supply. So this one's a 700. It's not going to be as efficient as if I bought an 800 gold. I'm going to go back here and see if there's how much the next one is. 700, 750, 750, 700. So this would be the first one that falls into that gold certified. It's another $7. And this one's modular. I like the modular because I can keep the only plug in the cables that I want. How much is 850? What? That's less. That's 85. Wait, no, no, no. It's not less. It's 92. Okay. I take it back. So the, the 750, uh, it's still only $7. I probably bought this 850 for that system. I'm just saying. Peak power, 10,050 watts for surge loads. That's pretty. I like that one. Those are the things we... I'm off task. Those are the things we have to look at. Wattage requirements. We have to look at the cables. Make sure it's got all the cables that we need. This one lists all the things that I can connect into this one. Um, and then... And then obviously, we're already looking at ATX ones. And then the last thing that I didn't have on that slide is what is my efficiency? Is it an 80 plus... Is it gold? Is it bronze? Those things I might want to look out to, depending on the cost of my electricity. And that's it for calculating and figuring out what kind of power supply we need.